Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. Today's video is ideas for embellishing little gift bags, little drawstring bags, which are brilliant for giving gifts in this time of year. I'm not going to give you a pattern for a drawstring bag because there are so many out there already, so many great tutorials that I didn't think the world needed my version. <laughs> but if you do want a good pattern to follow, I recommend this one. It's called Baby Cathedral Sachet by Ali from Arabesque Scissors and I will leave the link to that pattern down below. Ali's patterns are very well written, easy to follow and I love this one because it shows you how to do the cathedral window on the front and that's a great place to put a fussy cut of your favourite fabric. But today I'm just going to give you some ideas for ways in which you can embellish drawstring bags and make them a little bit different. So I really hope that you like these ideas. I think that you can apply these ideas to any drawstring bag pattern, any size of bag. It's just some ideas for making them a little bit different and giving them that little bit of handmade charm. The beauty of these little gift bags is that they are perfect for using up scraps and that's always the first place I go when I'm going to make something. So I look through my scraps and see what I've got and what I can use because I don't like to waste anything so as you can see I keep all my scraps. So I'm looking through, picking out little bits of liberty and things that will be perfect for these bags. The first way to add some lovely hand stitch details is to do a bit of hand quilting. So I've got my panels cut out for the front and back of my drawstring bag and I'm layering them up with some wadding that is exactly the same size. Now you could pin this or you could use some spray base to hold it together but I actually found that I didn't need to do that because they're just small pieces. Then I'm using a ruler and a hair marker which is a plastic tool for creating marks in your fabric, marks that will just wear out. They're not permanent markings. The creases, if you like. I decided to line the ruler up from corner to corner and create a crease by pressing the tool along that line. And I decided to do that as my starting point. I then line the ruler up to measure an inch away from that central line and created another line and I worked along the piece like that creating a creased line at every inch. Then I turned it round and again went back to that central line, lined it up and marked an inch away so that each of my lines are an inch apart. Next you need your needle and thread for hand quilting and I'm also using a thimble as well. So I'm using quite a large needle to get through the layers and I really love using this 12 weight cotton. It's called Fruity and it's by Wonderfill and it comes in a range of beautiful variegated colours. They are on my website and I really love this, it's just the right thickness. But of course you can use embroidery thread or pearl cotton, anything you like for hand quilting. And then to start with I put a knot in the end of my thread and bring it up from the back and I'm starting on the central line that I creased from corner to corner. This is a good place to start because it means it's going to hold your fabric in place, it's not going to shift. But don't forget, if you do have a problem with it moving, just add some pins to hold it in place. And then I'm just doing a really simple running stitch, making sure that my stitches are even, that they're the same length and the same length apart from each other. Thank you. 
Each time I finish a row, I just fasten it off with a knot, cut the thread and then move to the next row. Repeat this for all of the rows and on your second piece as well. Hand quilting is really lovely to do. You can get into a really nice rhythm and it's calming and relaxing. So I definitely recommend giving this a go. Because I drew a diagonal line across both pieces from corner to corner, the lines don't actually match up and I'm fine with that. But if you did want your lines to match up, then you would need to do one piece and then put the other one next to it and continue the line across. But just for ease, I just did corner to corner and worked from there and that's fine for me. Next I made the channels and I sewed the pouch together and made a lining and now I'm just stitching the lining in by hand. I like the result that stitching it by hand gives. I'm just doing an invisible catch stitch to join the line together. Once that's done, your pouch is complete and all you need now is to add some ribbons or cord to pull the pouch together and to fasten it at the top. It's really helpful to attach a safety pin to one end of your ribbon and that just helps to slide it through the channel. And when you've done that, you'll have a completed drawstring pouch. I really love the quilted effect that those simple stitches give this pouch and actually this is my favourite one of the three that I made today. I just love the effect, just a simple diagonal line. You could of course do lines going in the other direction or any way you want, but I really just think simplicity is quite often the best. And next up is another really simple idea. This pouch is made from some linen and I've done a contrast channel at the top and before I add the lining I am thinking about those little hexagon flowers that I've got left over from other things, hexagons that I've just made and they've been waiting to be appliqued onto something and I've used a bit of glue from the sew line glue pen just to secure it and I'm going to just applique it onto the front. And it's just a nice little handmade touch, a lovely way to add a bit of decoration to a simple pouch. And again, it's really lovely to do. You could have appliqued this to the front panel before attaching it and making it into the pouch. And that would make it a little bit easier. I was a little bit fiddly holding the pouch and making sure that I didn't stitch through to the back. But the reason that I did it like this was just to make sure I did get it absolutely central. Sometimes when you put something in the centre and then join the edges around it to make it into the pouch, it may be slightly off centre if your seams weren't perfect. Well, that's what happens with me sometimes anyway. So this is just the way I like to do it. Please do remember that when I'm showing you things, I'm just showing you the ways that I do things there are so many ways to do things and it's really a good idea to just experiment and have a go and see what works for you. These are just ideas and I'm just showing you how I do it but have a look, there are so many great ideas out there and so many different ways to do it. I really believe there's no right and wrong way, it's just the way that feels right to you and what you enjoy. So I'm just doing this applique stitch to attach the hexagon flower to the front of this little pouch. This time I didn't have any ribbon left that would have suited my project. So I just used some strips of Liberty. Because Liberty has a really high thread count, 
it doesn't fray as much as ordinary fabric does. It will fray a little bit over time, but not enough to really bother me. So using these strips of it and not worrying about the raw edges by folding them over is absolutely fine for something like this. You could of course fold over the raw edges and encase them and make sure that they didn't show, but it's entirely up to you and what look that you're going for. There are lots of shops that sell Liberty that often sell scrap bags or ribbons like this where they've cut the edges off their bolts of fabric each time they're cutting it for a customer just to keep that edge nice and straight and then they'll sell these ribbons at a really affordable price so it's always worth having a look for those. I know that that's something that I do quite often. I buy the scrap bags or I buy the ribbons because I always find a use for them and it's just a nice way of having lots of different prints. So there's bag number two. For bag number three I went to my Scraps of Liberty and decided to create a patchwork effect. First of all I pressed my scraps just to keep them nice and flat and that means that they'll sew together much better. I love this little mini iron for this purpose, it's really good for tiny patchwork. I then sew together two pieces by machine, not really worrying about what size the pieces are because I'm going to trim it all down as I go along. I'm just making sure that the panel I make is bigger than the overall size that I want the bag panel to be. So I just keep adding strips of fabric and sewing it on the sewing machine using a quarter inch seam allowance and then when I've, every time I've added a strip I then trim it down so that it's the same size as the other pieces. And this keeps everything nice and neat. Once I'd created my two panels, I put the wadding on the back of it and then I quilted it by machine and I just followed those lines of where I'd join the pieces together. Nothing fancy, just nice and simple. And then sew it all up into a bag. Really easy, really simple and I added some strips of Liberty for the drawstring. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. I really hope you like these little ideas for embellishing gift bags. Goodbye!